time for another G.I. Joe toy review. Last week we looked at the 1985 bomb disposal and it's only appropriate that we look at its cousin I would say or even a brother in arms the 1985 weapon transport it is also a small vehicle and it is incredible it's right up there with my favorites uh, this was a vehicle that I another one that I really wanted as a kid it was at a very good price point at two dollars and twenty nine cents and I also wanted it because the box featured Blowtorch, and I'll pull those pictures up in a moment, and Blowtorch was actually the very first G.I. Joe that I bought with my own money. Very proud of that action figure, and I still have him. I have him complete, uh, believe it or not, uh, after all these years. Uh, took very good care of my toys. So, the weapon transport was like I said was released in 85 it stayed on the shelves until 87 when it was discontinued had a good two-year run with that and uh, later on it was available through mail order um, from 88 to 90 so another two-year run and uh, needless to say this is very common vehicle to find very difficult to find complete because of one stupid antenna mine doesn't have it I apologize for it not being complete um, I'll pull up a picture to show you what it looks like complete as well but isn't that the case there's always that silly little part that's missing um, especially in the early 80s they like to include detachable antennas uh, the bivouac came with a little computer that had an antenna that's often missing. The forward ob observation unit, or the, whatever it was called, I always called it the forward observation unit. Uh, that came with a radio, had a little antenna, very commonly missing as well. Um, I'll review the forward observation unit later on down the road um, I do have it without the antenna but I still yeah 99 percent complete is still review worthy so uh, without uh, with all that being said let me pull up those pictures for you real quick of those two um, of this vehicle I should say So, uh, as you can see with the pictures, there was a, a variance on the box. One was for the Sergeant Slaughter mailway, uh, Sergeant Slaughter version one. And I also pulled up a picture of what the vehicle looked like with its antenna. Um, to me, it's not a necessary part of the vehicle, but um, it does look pretty, pretty cool with the antenna on it. Um, just a little stick and it looks like it slides in and out really easy so naturally it's the most commonly missing part uh, so I consider something that's 99% complete as uh, review worthy uh, for example the bivouac came with a little computer with an antenna they loved the detachable antennas back then in the early 80s and that was often missing. Uh, the forward observation unit, as I call it, I don't know if that's the proper name. I haven't committed it to memory. Uh, that came with a little radio that had a detachable antenna. And again, that is a missing part as well. As I do have the forward observation unit, I will review that later down the road. It doesn't have the antenna, but again, it's 99% complete. I could pull up a picture to show you what it looks like. 
So, uh, with all that being said, you know, I don't have any childhood memories of playing with this. Uh, my buddy John didn't have it, and uh, he didn't seem to really care about buying it. It's the same day that I bought Blowtorch, he was with me. And um, he bought Storm Shadow, I think think it was Storm Shadow anyway um, then I, I had purchased Blowtorch but I could share that story when I, I review Blowtorch but I looked up at the on the top shelf and it had these smaller vehicles the support vehicles and um, I was just wishing that I had more than three dollars <laughs> um, it came out to be 320 Blowtorch was um, 325 with tax um, so, if I had, you know, even five bucks, I would have purchased the, this vehicle as well to go with it, but, um, whoa, just smashed a big old freaking spider, that was stupid, <laughs> I'm sorry, um, that was really stupid of me to do that, because, It could have very well have been um, venomous. They're all venomous, but um, that's how they kill their prey, but something that's toxic to humans. That was very stupid. Uh, I live in an area with black widows and brown recluses. And... Um, recluses, that's not recluse, it's plural. Um, two of those spiders are very deadly uh, for people with compromised immune systems. And uh, their venom is tissue necrotic. It, it'll dissolve your tissue. Um, I've seen several of these spider bites in the emergency room. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> they're deadly to um, diabetics and children uh, if they're not treated right away. Um, diabetics because they have the compromised circulate, circulatory system. But the bites that I've seen come in, uh, one in particular, I was a student, so this really stood out. I, I know I'm digressing, but this is interesting. Uh, the guy ended up having a blister about the size of a 50 cent piece and uh, it was green very painful very swollen and um, he was playing around with the the blister and he popped it and the smell was just horrid I can't even describe how terrible the odor was from that and um, he said, oh, okay, the pain's gone. Uh, I'm going home. <laughs> and I was standing there, I said, no, don't go home. You still need to be seen. I said, you have an infection going on. And I looked, and there was a, a, a hole in his arm from where it had dissolved the flesh. I said, I said I'm not a doctor, but you need to be seen. Uh, you need antibiotics, it looks like. It's it's infected. It needs to be treated. He said, no, I'm going home. And he just gets up and walks out. Um, you have that right, of course. But it stunk up the ER. And fortunately, they have this very wonderful spray. It's an orange vanilla scent. And they spray it, and it automatically just kills any odor. So that was a, a lifesaver. But um, I'll never forget that day. And I'm sorry for digressing. Cool story. And as you guys know, I like telling stories. Has nothing to do with G.I. Joe, but it is a cool story nonetheless, at least to me. So let's go ahead and take a look at this vehicle. And it's just way too cool, man. I, I, I love this vehicle. So let's go ahead and look at it. All right, so here it is, the weapons transport. I do have... 
my blowtorch right there, as you can see. Uh, I, I'm not going to review him, so I don't have all of his equipment with him. Uh, his O-ring just broke <laughs> when I picked him up. But as you can see, uh, he isn't as bright of a pink as he once was. I left him outside for a few days in the hot desert sun and it, it bleached him. So, poor blowtorch. But um, this is the star of the show right now, the weapons transport vehicle. I do have the blueprint, as you can see. Um, very nice bonus. So we could go over the parts right now. Um, number one is the carbon fire, uh, carbon fiber reinforced two-way antenna, which is this, which I don't have. All-terrain bulletproof rotation or uh, flotation tires. So the tires are bulletproof, which is nice. Uh, steel armor plate engine housing right here on the front. Uh, the thermo uh, statically controlled front air intake louvers. Okay, that's number four. And where would those end up being? On Right here. It's a grill. It's a grill. It's not thermos statically controlled you know it's controlled by a thermostat it's your grill and your radiator okay they just made it sound real real um pompous real formal like some educated gluteus maximus over there in, in hasbro wrote this heavy duty towable bomb carriage right here so I guess heavy duty could tow it as well the tractor hitch right here on the front or on the back also on the front that's cool that they did that uh, bomb cradle which is right here that the bomb sits in the force 1000 MK 88 magnesium cased bomb very cool. Uh, Force 1000, I already read that. And the uh, PD 9mm shielded submachine gun right there. Very nice. Uh, I, I love having the blueprints. And what's cool, this machine gun detaches and you could have an action figure carry it. Uh, just look at that. That is a cool little submachine gun slots right in here at the front very nice it does have a removable seat well not removable but the seat in here has nice detailing it's padded has a control stick and they even um, put a diamond grate pattern on the floor very nice detail to that they really paid close attention to this stuff when it first came out and then in the 90s it petered out more diamond plating on on the sides here so the fig figures could climb up on there if they needed to oh just some mechanical stuffs here on the front you have your stickered headlights a lot of care and detail went into this vehicle fuel tank here on the back kind of exposed which I don't like but it's all right and right here is the hole for the antenna to go into and then looking at the cradle pretty cool has a slot here for a action figure to stand on we'll use my stunt short fuse a little bit too big but it does work so you could have him riding on the back here, holding on to the bomb if need be. Uh, the bomb itself, really cool. It was kind of cartoonish looking. Uh, has the dumbbell slot at the bottom. 
little concave on the back. And you could, it kind of reminds me of Bullet Bill as well from Mario Brothers, if it didn't have the fins. <coughs> Excuse me. The wheels attached to a dumbbell peg, uh, bomb cradle, or mushroom peg, sorry. The bomb cradle is the dumbbell peg. Really cool. Has the, the toe hitch, so you could hook it on. Uh, the bomb, of course, fits right on there. Very snug like. Does not fall off. You could also attach it to the front if you need to push it anywhere. Uh, did have a steering wheel. I apologize for that. Uh, did not notice that at all. But uh, it's missing its little steering wheel. So it's 98% complete. But a cool vehicle nonetheless. Should have noticed it from the blueprints right here. I do love this. It is very nice. Uh, I, I just cannot say enough good about this little vehicle. Uh, I wouldn't have played with the bomb cradle. This alone, hours and hours of fun. I built, built ramps and jumped it, everything that a boy does with his toys. This, my friends, is top shelf. I do recommend that you guys get one. Alrighty, I... Like I said, I, I love that vehicle. Uh, even though I didn't have it as a kid, I still have pretty fond memories of seeing it in the store. It was at my favorite grocery store uh, called Smitty's. In some states, it's Fred Meyer. That store had everything. It, it was a one-stop shopping store uh, very novel in the the 80s um, when I moved here from Ohio in 82 uh, we I, I lived in a, a small farming community and grocery stores were just grocery stores that was it you might find there's a toy section of course might find some automotive supplies things like that but it was your your bare essential grocery store that we come out here and we find Smitty's it had a full-size restaurant in it. it had a barber shop it had a bank uh, a snack bar a candy counter uh, a florist then it had the grocery section and it sold clothing toys and even sporting goods and firearms had an electronic section, a place where you could um, rent uh, VHS tapes. So that store just blew my mind. It was my favorite store. So every time we went there, I'd go right to the toy aisle, which is right, right in the front of the store by the checkout, and I would look at this vehicle, just sit there and just wish that I had it. And uh, obviously, I, I had never gotten it, but it's okay. I have it now as an adult, so those are my childhood memories, and that's how bad I, I wanted this vehicle, and it has stayed with me all these years. So finally, got it at a very decent price and was able to purchase it. Okay, so that brings me to my favorite segment of the show. Byron's Gripes. Yep, yeah, there are some gripes out here today. Uh, took my blood pressure medicine, so whew, goose fraba, right? So, you want this vehicle. There are quite a few out there. Incomplete, with no gun and no antenna. So, just... This part right here, $9.99. A little too much on that, um, but this vehicle you could buy cheaply and well, relatively, um, or you could rebuild it relatively cheaply if you want to go that route. But this guy is charging a lot in shipping, close to $10 in shipping. 
which is just astronomical. This is not heavy at all. I would say at the most $5. I'm no shipping expert. This is just going off of my um, life experience of uh, shipping items and receiving them you know, through eBay. And I'm only quoting the eBay prices for you guys who are just joining me. It is not to pick on eBay at all. It's not to pick on the sellers at all. This is just giving everybody a general idea of, of what to look for uh, if you are new to the collecting world. So again, so you don't go in blindly and uh, wonder, is this a good price? Is this too much? So I'm doing this as entertainment, but also to help you guys out. So incomplete with the bomb only, uh, $2.99. So that isn't bad. So you, you get the, the bomb without the cradle, the tractor without the gun. $2.99, deal of the day. The gun is going from $4.99 to $5.99, and yeah, that's that's good. That's that's decent. I'm not saying it's great. $2.99 would be even better, but it is a commonly missing part. So incomplete all by itself. Um, so that was six dollars to to nine ninety nine. I'm sorry, I missed the six dollars at the beginning. So it's six to nine ninety nine. Six dollars is pretty decent for that. I I'll go go with that one. The bomb by itself two dollars to three ninety nine. Three ninety nine is on the high end. Uh, I would go definitely go with the two dollar. There's one for two fifty as well. And complete with no antenna. Oh goodness! Heavens to Murgatroyd! It's expensive even. Remember that character? Um, my gosh, twenty bucks. Twenty dollars. For this altogether incomplete, no antenna, twenty bucks. No. Whoever priced that, um, it's your toy. But have a little heart, okay? For for us nine to fivers who have a family and a mortgage, two car payments that want to get into collecting or want to share this. That's kind of expensive. Lower your prices a bit, please. Help a guy out. Incomplete, no antenna with the box. With the box, 45 bucks. I'm going to call that a deal of the day as well. Having the box at $45 and the blueprints with this, it had the steering wheel. No antenna, 99% complete, 45 bucks is the way to go. I would do that. The box is small, displays on the wall, very nice, I'm sure. Oh, let's see. Blueprints. $4 to $4.06. Oh, no, sorry. $4 for the blueprints. Good, That that's right on. But they want four dollars and six cents for shipping. You're paying more for shipping than the actual item itself. That could fit into a standard small brown shipping envelope, or even if you fold it up smaller, which wouldn't make it so nice, it could go in a standard shipping envelope with regular postage. It could, you know, that's letter size, right? And they're wanting four dollars and six cents. No, sir, Bob. That will not ship for $4.06, and it's not coming from a foreign country. That really upsets me when people do that, charge you more in shipping. And it's a nasty trend that's going on right now. And it, it, it really stinks. 
that people are doing that, charging a lot of, and shipping to get the get more money. I accidentally did that one time, and the buyer, you know, said, "Hey, you know, you charge this much in shipping, but the shipping label said it was this much." Once he pointed that mistake, I didn't even pay attention to the shipping label. But I reimbursed him right away. I felt terrible for doing that. And I actually reimbursed him $2 more just for the trouble. So um, I, I helped the customer out, and he and I are friends now. Uh, we, we talk through email quite a bit. Really cool guy from Minnesota. Just love the Midwestern, mid, Midwestern people. <laughs> okay, the trailer with a bomb. Four ninety nine, four ninety nine, pretty good. To <laughs> Oiga Val, fifteen bucks for that, and it goes to show you just because it says GI Joe for you who know the answer, it does not mean it's expensive, right? I could fart in a balloon and paint GI Joe on it, and I'm not going to sell it for five hundred dollars. It is worthless, but just a silly example of just because it says G.I. Joe, it doesn't make it expensive. Okay, incomplete. It's missing the steering wheel and antenna, but it comes with an incomplete blowtorch. He has none of his accessories, 23 bucks. Eh, it's almost deal of the day because it comes with an action figure and a cool one at that. One of the wheels that goes on the, the main vehicle part, the tractor, I would say, one dollar. Excellent. Excellent deal on that. Um, the part where the wheel does fit on um, it can be fragile if it gets stepped on. Well, anything's pretty much fragile. But this is kind of a, a harder plastic, the same plastic the vamp was made out of. So um, with time, it does become frail. So uh, I did see one out there that had the broken carriage on it. Um, the, the bottom is pretty cool too. Hollow, but neat. Uh, not the broken carriage, but a broken axle. So a wheel, you know, one buck. Mint and box, and it is sealed. I looked at the pictures. The seals are not cut. It doesn't it doesn't appear to have duck um, a regular you know clear packing tape over it. Four four hundred ten eighty four. Um, that is, in my opinion, quite high for a mint in box. I'm sure there are cheaper ones out there, but if it is in a, it comes in a. Um, very nice uh, case so if you're a mint and box collector you know I'll leave that up to you I'm not a mint and box guy if I can get one at a decent price yeah I'll, I'll buy one you know just for sentimental reasons uh, the seat 299 to three bucks it's about average for something like that the trailer by itself six dollars eh, a little on the high end boxed complete but it is open but the parts are still on the sprues 49.99 or better offer deal of the day all day on that especially because the parts are still on the sprues uh, the seller just opened it up took it out of the bag so that is Byron's gripes. Oh, if you guys have a toy that you would like to see reviewed, if I have it, I'll review it. Just leave me a request uh, down in the comments, or you could shoot me an email. It'll be also be down in the the description. Uh, if you want to become a channel supporter, you could do it one of two ways. One, you could um, donate a a toy to this channel which is not necessary but it does help out as you guys know these prices are kind of high 
And um, all this has come out of my pocket, and gladly I, I do that. Um, but it will help me out and allow me to use that money that I would spend on myself to buy a toy for a giveaway. So that will really help out. The money is essentially going back to you guys. Uh, you could also um, donate to my um, PayPal account. Just log on to PayPal and type in my uh, email. It'll pop up and you could uh, send me a, a payment through PayPal if you so choose to. I would greatly appreciate it. I'm also on um, coffee. All that will be down in the description if you want to leave a one-time tip. And that will automatically put you in with the channel supporters. And the channel supporters um, have their own separate giveaway. But it's it won't be anything better than what I would give to um, the rest of you uh, everything is equal but you stand a greater chance of winning because I have so few channel supporters and if I, when I get more and more as time goes on yeah the prizes will get better I promise you that but right now I'm, I'm, I'm doing everything equally and everybody who subscribes is uh, eligible for a giveaway. When I reach 500 subscribers, I will be holding a giveaway for both my channel supporters and um, for my subscribers. And uh, if you look through my other videos, um, the giveaway videos, you can see they are very nice prizes. I will not give away something that I wouldn't keep for myself. Uh, all, everything is complete that I give away and in very good condition. So, this is just my way of thanking you guys for being so awesome, for being my friends, for being my supporters. Uh, you know, I really, <clears throat> excuse me, I really appreciate you guys more than, more than you know. Uh, you've stuck with me through uh, some of my health problems, uh, especially this past year <clears throat> when I became septic from... Uh, I had surgery on my kidney and became septic through that. Uh, blood poisoning is the, the layman's term for it. Uh, came very, very close to checking out, shedding this more mortal coil, kicking the bucket. You know, Came dangerously close and uh, you guys were there supporting me and bolstering me and that helped pull me through. Uh, just reading your comments really... Um, warmed my heart and I'm stuck with having to wear oxygen because of that my heart and lungs were damaged hearts doing great now that I have a pacemaker but my lungs are not doing so great um, <laughs> hence the oxygen but I don't let it keep me down I still get out there and yeah, kick butt and take names or kick names and you know <laughs> I still work when I can uh, do my best out there and uh, patients kind of look at me weird when I walk in with oxygen on and they're like oh, should you be in bed with and I take care of you <laughs> and, but I, I assure you I, I can work and I do work very well um, try not to wear my oxygen at work but if I have to I have to so anyway I just babble on. I, I'm sorry about that. Uh, you guys are fantastic. I have the best subscribers out here. Uh, love you all. Uh, can't say enough good about you guys. I, I mean that from the bottom of my heart. I, I cannot say enough good. You guys are just phenomenal. Developed a lot of good friendships from this channel. So... All that being said, this is Joe Motion Videos 82 signing off. You guys have a fabulous day. Stay safe, take care of yourselves, and also don't forget to be kind to animals. They have feelings too. They know nothing but unconditional love. So give your dog, your cat a hug, your bird, your snake, whatever. However you show affection to your animals, do it. Let them know that you appreciate them. So you guys take care. Have a great day. We'll see you next week for another awesome toy review. Bye-bye.
Bye. Camera's not wanting to shut off.